Good morning, Mr. Cronk. Remember us? Inspector Blood. And Sergeant Helm. Eager to labor. Eager to be happy. Don't you ever knock before you come into a room? Oh, do you have a, a license to knock, Sergeant? <laughs> Give me the last one away to a television critic. <laughs> What do you want? <laughs> the shelter of your mighty name. Authority. We can't make a move without it. Mm. Dominates her every waking moment. Oh, very well then. Let's see what this is all about. What's it all about? <clears throat> oh, no. Yes? When did she arrive? Uh, three days ago. Incognito. Circularize all the big departmental stores and tell them... Lulu was back in town. <laughs> Tell them that the customary courtesies and civilities are to be observed towards the Queen Mother Helena of Morphania, guest, honoured guest, incognito of Her Majesty's government. And Queen shoplifter Pater extraordinary to those in the know. Yes, and uh, oh, shoplifter extraordinary to those in the know. Oh. The Queen Mother of Morphania. She says, thank you, you dear democratic imbecile. Your majesty. Oh, you mean she really is a queen? Not the kind you're probably familiar with, dear. <laughs> Silly darling, a nice to see you again. Oh, <laughs> a delightful surprise. Oh, we must sit down. Our royal feet are killing us. <laughs> You are still at it, I see. Oh, it's in the blood, darling. My ancestors stole whole provinces and countries. And you go shoplifting. You mustn't despise shoplifters, Siri. We were the pioneers of self-service. Will you have a cigarette? You never seem to steal my brand. Mm, it's difficult to be both speedy and selective. Thank you, darling. What brings you to England, Helena? Cares of state. Such as? I am looking for his serene and exalted highness, Ferdinand VIII of Morphania, my half-witted son. Fred is over here. Looking for some girl. Oh, Siri, you must help me find him before he makes the most ghastly fool of himself. But he is the most ghastly fool. Well, let's not give him the chance to prove it publicly. <laughs> But is this not really rather a matter for the Foreign Office? I should prefer the whole matter to remain private and discreet, and so I'm sure would they. Darling, do you know that the British government pays for everything I steal during my visits here? <laughs> oh, gallant of them. Yes, isn't it? You don't happen to know a reliable inquiry agent, do you? I do know an inquiry agent. Reliable? If he likes you. His name is Phil Scrotty. Hard-working, if he's interested. Oh, the story of all our lives. Is he honest? I'd say so. Nobody else would. You like him? Very much. Have you been to bed with him? Does that have to be one of his qualifications? Oddly enough, darling, in a way, yes. You may be the most promiscuous woman in Europe, but I've noticed that you seldom bed down with anyone who hasn't some touch of style. I have been to bed with him. Then let's find this man. That's recommendation enough for me. Let's find this, uh, Scrotty. They call him Phil Scrotty. Yeah, that's my name. We fell over your dustbins, Mr. Scrotty. That's what they're there for. <laughs> Funny man. Yeah, well, what can I do for you? They are the Brothers Grimm. What? The Brothers Grimm. Not the well-known fairy tale collectors. You will come with us, Mr. Scrotty. Uh-uh. You will come with us. Where? To a place. Too vague. Persuade me better. If you don't come with us, Mr. Scrotty... You will break both I, your legs. I will break your oh, legs. And I will break the right ah, ones. Ah, ah, ah. The dustbins. Ah. Well, I told you, that's what they're there for. Ah. Your dustbins attacked me. James Baldwin said the same thing. James Baldwin was here. I'm Theobald Abu, emerging African. Phil Scrotty, outgoing white trash. I wish to consult you, Mr. Scrotty, on a matter of some small private importance. Mr. Scrotty is outgoing. At this immediate moment. Hey. I shall wait here until his return. I might be gone for years. We Africans have learned how to wait.
does not reply. Doesn't he have a secretary? No. Where can I find your Mr. Scrutty? I will take you to him. I should prefer to talk to him alone, my dear. I have the feeling you do not quite trust me. Oh, no, dear. It's just that there are some things which, by their very dreary nature, had better be kept in the family. <laughs> I understand. Now, tell me where to find your private investigator. Just say that again. She then went to a department store. Where she nicked the following. Two small tins of baby food and a rhododendron plant in a polythene bag. A packet of biscuits and two rather surprisingly nubile onions. A paper bag? Yes, well, never mind about all that. Where did she go to next? Uh, she then went to see a very old friend of yours. Who? Uh, Siri Vanette. No. Yes. yes. <laughs> and from there she's gone to visit another old friend of yours. Not Phil Scrutty. Yeah. Mm. Oh, would that I were dead, Siri Vanette. Phil Scrotty and this crazy Queen Mother woman all cooking up something together. Oh. How what it is, Washington? <laughs> you are not quite what I expected, Mr. Scrotty. I'm afraid. Uh, uh, you have been highly recommended to me by uh, uh, an intimate friend of yours. Siri. Siri? Siri Van Epp. I know no one of that name. I'm glad to see that the missionary schools are still teaching traditional 19th century values. Missionary schools? Values? About, about the responsibility of a gentleman towards a woman's good name. Siri has told me of your little affair. So shall we take it as read? Who are you? I am Queen Mother Helena of Morphania. I want you to find my son, the present incumbent, if you'll pardon the expression, of the throne. This is he. What? Uh... What is he doing here? A girl, of course, and a very good question. I have a photograph of her, too. He had hidden it in the sleeve of one of his long playing records, but I know all his little hiding places now. There. This is the girl? That is the girl. Find her, and you found my son. I'll be in touch. Siri never mentioned that you were a dark gentleman. How clever of her. I mean, that should make finding the girl easier for you. Her being coloured too, I mean. I'm the Queen Mother of Morphania. Two minutes and 60 dead Indians to go. If John Wayne was laid end to end, would he reach the Alamo? What to do, what to do, what to do? There must be something better. Would you like your sister to marry a chocolate? Maybe I'd win a beauty contest. Need photographs. That Italian boy I met on the boat took some. Said he'd send me some prints. That was two years ago. Someday my prince will come. Maybe I should start doing the pools again. Win the pools and buy a castle. A castle is any room sleeping less than four. I might even marry an African and live in a tree. Marry royalty. Happiness is just a thing called dough. John Wayne's do it again. Here come the British. Is our visiting monarch still under surveillance? Our last report was to the effect that she was cutting a wide sway through Harrods. I want to know everything she does, everywhere she goes, and everyone she meets. Understood? Understood. Would you care to join me? Delighted. Hmm. Departments 1, 8, 14, stand by. Check. Department 8. Check. Department 14. Check. Question. Is Abu still under surveillance? 8. Yes. I want a meeting here at 10.30 in the morning 
of all departments. One, egg, 14. One, any instructions? Yes. Find out where Phil Scrotty went and who were the two men that he went with. He comes. This is the man. Yes, sir. Uh, you may leave us. I'm Ferdinand the 18th of Morphania. Uh-huh. You may kiss the royal hand. Sorry, they might take away my British passport. As you please. Why'd you have me brought here? I want you to find a girl for me. I'm pimping for royalty already. I think you misunderstand. Well, you know, kings have a bad image. This girl, do you have a picture of her? Well, unfortunately, no. I had one, but Mama found it and confiscated it. I do have one clue, however. Oh, great. Uh, this. <laughs> Fine, where'd you get it? Well, I was uh, sightseeing in some of the less salubrious parts of Soho. I saw this beautiful girl dancing in a discotheque I visited. She slipped and the shoe skidded under my table. So I hid it. So you want me to look around and bring it back filled with girl? You have a reputation of being a man of resource. <laughs> but one shoe, one goddamn shoe. I... By the way, did I tell you that the girl was uh, colored? I know you didn't. Well, why didn't you tell me? Well, I don't like the word colored. I have uh, liberal tendencies. And what have your liberal tendencies in mind for this girl if I find her? Uh, marriage. <laughs> You're joking. No, why should I be? You, a reigning monarch, marry a colored girl. You find her and you'll see. Oh, I'll find her, all right. <laughs> I'll find her even if I have to pass over. There's what I call real liberal tendencies. You weren't fooling. I beg your pardon. You Africans have certainly learned how to wait. Are you laboring under the misconception that I have spent the night here, Mr. Scrotty? To coin a phrase, yes. Such was not the case. Great, I won't have to move into camp bed. Some very strange people come here to see you, Mr. Scrotty. Yes? Yesterday there was a lady who claimed to be the Queen Mother Helena of Morphania. Maybe she was. She was indeed. I checked. What do I owe you for the trouble? This royal personage thought I was you. Maybe she came without her lorgnette. I know, therefore, what she wanted here. Yes? She wants you to find this girl. Uh-huh. Oddly enough, I had originally intended to ask you to do the same thing. I'd say this girl's West Indian. You could very well be correct. Is it a good likeness? I do not know. I've never met her. If you've never met her, then how do you know it's the girl you want me to find? She's wearing a rather unusual necklace. A traditional female ornament of my country. Your country? Yes. I gave it to a friend of mine several years ago. He said it was the sort of thing his little sister might like. Whose little sister is she? That I cannot tell you. First she's a shoe, and then she's a necklace. This little dolly doesn't exist in her own right. To whom is she a shoe? More royalty. Then they're not together. Who? This king fellow and the girl. Well, you didn't mention knowing about him. Never mind that. They're not together. Well, he doesn't even know she exists. He did but see her passing by, and yet will he love her till he die? Very interesting. What are you all gonna do if I find her? Draw lots for her? I do not want her found, Mr. Scotty. Now, whatever made me think you did? I said that such was my original intention. And now? Now I will pay you handsomely not to find her. I will pay you even more handsomely if you can convince those searching for her that she is dead. What 
have you been doing, Helena? Just a few stars, darling. You didn't mention that your Mr. Scrotty was colored. What did you say? I said you didn't mention your Mr. Scrotty was colored. He is not. The Mr. Scrotty I met was. I can assure you mine most definitely is not. How bizarre. <laughs> well, gentlemen, are we all here? One, eight, fourteen. Good. Anything further on Abu? Eight. He's been to see Scrotty again. What's he after? Uh, we don't know. Uh, haven't you got a line into Scrotty's office? Uh, no. Why not? Well, apparently, there's been rather a rush in concealed microphones recently. Mr. Edam of Stores has instituted a system of priorities. We're well down his list. Well, that stupid little empire builder, all right, leave it to me. <clears throat> what happened about Morphania? Fourteen, still working on it, sir. Oh, what kind of a department am I running? One. One. Have you found out where Scrotty went and who the two men were that he went with? We're still working on it, sir. Uh, in other words, you don't know. You could put it that way. What a lot of idiots you all are. Prophecy approximation, please. One, you find out all that you can about the kingdom of Morphania. Eight full details on Theobald Abu. Fourteen, everything that you can dig up about the Queen Mother of Morphania. K Department to Prophecy Approximation. I want a call and response machine. And I want everything that I've told you to get by 1,700 hours tomorrow in this office, which in English money is five o'clock now. Imshi! Okay, Department. Inspector Blood. I'd like to have a little chat with our friend Phil Scrotty. None of that dumb insolence. with this. What is it? A photograph and a note. Private. It says, for safekeeping, P.S. All right, let's hear the P.S. Those are the initials of the sender, Phil Scrotty. Oh. The photograph is of a colored girl. Let me see that photograph. That's the photograph I gave my black Mr. Scrotty. Now, my white Mr. Scrotty has sent it to me. Why? Well, gentlemen, and who are you? We are fog inspectors. You can start right inside my head. We might even do that. The photograph? I don't have it. Where is it? I swallowed it when I heard you come in. Phil Scrotty speaking. Oh, hello, Inspector. You want to see me, huh? Right away, huh? Well, you just have to come and get me. That was the police, Inspector Blood, to be specific. Bluff. The inspector doesn't like me treating him like that, and he moves fast when he's mad. I'll say you got about five minutes. Get away from that desk. He's a messy feeder. Ah! It isn't here. Rubbish. White rubbish. Let's go. I'm not just a pretty face. I wish I was just a pretty face. Stupid pretty faces have it made. Though I'm black, yet am I comely. Why though? There was a student I met. He had long hair, 
little goatee beard and a C&D badge. He said that part of the trouble was semantic. Words have their own prejudices. So first you have to confuse the words themselves, make them screw up their own meanings, hence their own prejudice, you dig? We should talk about black snow, white dark glasses, blacker than black detergent, white Muslims, black salt and sugar, white shadows. Everybody at Wimbledon should wear black. Letters should be written on black paper with white ink. He said I could either be Auntie White or Uncle Tom. And then he tried to put his hand up my skirt. Oh, well. Well, uh, I'm a victim of racial prejudice. How many D's in prejudice? Uh, one. How do you feel? I got none with a hangover. Like a none with a hangover. How long have I been here? How long have I been here? About 16 hours. Have I been talking? You have. Have I been talking? What have I been saying? A lot, mate. <laughs> A lot. Food for thought, Inspector. Food for thought. What do you make of it? Offhand, I'd say. Yes? Scotty's brains are scrambled. But how interestingly. Kings and queens in a lady's shoe. Ah, uh, Cinderella stuff. And with Cinderella as a coloured girl. Scotty was delirious. Yes, but you did find a lady's shoe. Yes, just outside his office door. Well? Now that Scotty's come round, you won't get another word out of him. Perhaps he's said enough. Speaking. Yes? Yes? Uh, very satisfactory. Thank you. Silly Van Epp is on her way there now. You better get back there, quick! I should have brought flowers, but I could not think of anything appropriate. Just leave the money. How are you feeling? Just great. How'd you know where to find me? Someone telephoned. Nothing to do with me. I did not think it was. Can we, uh, talk? They probably bugged the bedpan. Do you know who did this to you? Yeah. Is it connected with the thing you sent to me? Yeah. Ah. It would be a good thing all round if you did not find the girl. What do you know about it? Quite a lot. If I don't find her, they'll think they scared me off. That is stupid masculine vanity. Ah, so what? The intelligent thing is to turn this situation to advantage. Go away, I'm tired. Get well. We'll spend April in Paris. April in Paris is just 30 wet days. <laughs> Goodbye, Scrotty. Smashing bird, that. Well, why don't you write her a sonnet in your bloody little notebook? How many ends in sonnet? K Department. Prophecy of confirmation. You have a call and response machine requisitioned for 1700 hours. Oh, don't tell me that it's. become available at 1130. Book it. Booked. 1 8 14. The information that each of you are collecting for me. I shall require it five and a half hours earlier than originally requested. That is all. Uh, Mr. Theobald Abu. He's Mau Mau. Him in. Oh. Mr. Abu. I'm flattered. By whom? 
by the rather eccentric lady who thought that we were lovers. Ah. Mr. Scotty is a very lucky man. And he has a fractured skull to prove it. We live in shocking times. I have with me 210 pound notes. Yes? I'm prepared to hand these over to Mr. Scotty, or to you as his representative. The money to be regarded as an ex gracia payment and in no way committing me to any expression of liability. Simply a humanitarian gesture? Quite. I shall require a receipt. A rather unusual receipt. A photograph of a colored girl. You did not have copies made, did you? Or have someone else make them for you? I believe you. Thank you. Perhaps you'll have dinner with me one evening. No. Race prejudice? Yes. You must keep your hatred pure, Mr. Abu. No little self-indulgent concessions. You're probably right. Show Mr. Abu out. Sexy, wasn't he? You think so? Hmm. You sold him Pearl's photograph. Did I? Mm. Supposing I were to run after him and... Oh. And one for Mary Quant. Inspector Blood, uh, the machine is programmed for Phil Scrotty. Indeed. Fourteen. How about Sir Van Epp? Programmed. Eight. Theobald Abu. I have the data here. Now, gentlemen, uh, this machine will show us how the two threads in this case are tied together. Uh, that is, King Ferdinand and Theobald Abu, if indeed they are tied together at all. Proceed, eight. Uh, Theobald Abu, born 25th September 1936. President of the International Brotherhood of Emergence, on whose behalf he travels the world. Violent, automatic surveillance when in this country, category black. The pun is accidental. Acknowledge. <laughs> One, Morphania. The kingdom of Morphania consists of some 250 square miles of the Balkans, population about 5,000. Its climate is reckoned the worst in Europe. Its agriculture is primitive, its industry nil. Its inhabitants exist mainly on food parcels. It has no culture, no politics, and only the most rudimentary religious beliefs. His present ruler is King Ferdinand XVIII. His mother, the Queen Mother Helena, is English. Present monarch is unmarried. Acknowledge. <coughs> Five minutes, gentlemen. You may smoke. Hello, darling. Oh, oh, don't ask me how I feel. Oh, all right. I'll ask you how I look. Uh, fab, gear, whatever the password is today. Oh, and you bought it all. That's me, the last of the big spenders. Well, I mean, you didn't actually give me the money, oh, slow, Ray. Slow and easy, please. Well, you know that photograph you sent? Yes. She flogged it. You're joking. Mm, to a spade. Abu, his name was. Oh, don't trust anyone. Don't even talk to yourself. 
I still don't see money in it for you. Well, you see, I knew the girl in that photograph. What? Pearl Childers. Used to work with her in a cinema, selling ice cream and drinks on a stick and that. And you know where her address is? Mm, used to live there myself. Do you know how to find her? Did you tell anyone else? No. Pencil and paper. <gasps> mm, you never have anything, do you? Go to this address and ask for Ferdinand. Tell him where the girl is. You'll do that for me, won't you? For you, anything. Oh. How much did you hit my dear friend Siri for? Two hundred. I'll see you get as much again. Oh, I like you. Get well soon and we'll go to Paris in the spring. Too crowded. I gotta get out of this place. I gotta get out of this place. No, no, I no, gotta Mr. get out Schmucky, of this place. I, I, oh, yeah. Look, nurse, just get me my clothes. I gotta We're see somebody. Being ever okay. oh, naughty, oh, I gotta get. I gotta go some. Naughty, uh, naughty, uh, naughty. Uh, naughty. Uh, The machine speaks. Oh, a delicious problem, if I may say so. Quite, quite delicious. Morphania, my dears, the kingdom of. The mere thought of the place makes one want to cower like a wild thing or indulge in a passionate fit of weeping. That dreadful climate, those tedious people, Visigoths, no culture, nothing. But only if you are thinking white European. Theobald Abu doesn't think white European. Remember that hilariously Victorian phrase, the white man's grave. For Theobald Abu, the white man's grave is anywhere you can bury him. Ever so hilarious. Black world domination with a European base. Oh my God. Where, my dears? Why not Morphania? Who else wants it? What other use is it to anyone? except as a Trojan horse. But this is ridiculous. Abu is an intelligent man. Sure you One is absolutely consumed with admiration for the way Abu intended it to happen. To use a fairy tale to strike at us through our childhood. Cinderella, in French, Cendrillon. Italian, La Cenerentola. A clear case of shoe fetishism, of course. The machine has been programmed incorrectly. It's gone off its... The Van Epp woman was in it, of course. Such a mercenary bitch. The Queen Mother, Helena, stayed with her, ostensibly here on one of her shoplifting sprees. King Ferdinand took up residence elsewhere to give the impression of defying his royal mama. Abu had the girl hidden away until the right moment arrived to produce her. The press would pay a fortune for this story. Sex, royalty, and a whiff of race. If he succeeded, Abu and his organization would have their foothold in Europe. And from that very moment, well, you don't want me to draw pictures for you, do you? <laughs> gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, will you all please withdraw? Well, keep Morphania white at any cost. Keep Morphania white. Yes. Keep Cinderella white. Oh, 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 man is a useless passion. Oh, man is a useless passion. Oh, man is a useless passion. Eight hundred, nine hundred, one thousand. Top address is where Pearl lives. One underneath is where Squatty says you'll find this Ferdinand. I'm sorry you're leaving. Mm. Got to better myself. I think you'll go far. Where else is there to go? <laughs> Sorry, Panep. Yes? Yes. All right, I'll come at once. No, thank you. I have my own car. 
Well, time is the width of a street divided by the speed of a bullet. What we all have least of. A child's long summer day, an old man's breath in winter. <laughs> I gotta get out of this place! Uh, uh. Very nice of you to have come along. I can never resist a new experience. Of course, this is the first time that we have met. Only before through intermediaries. <laughs> exactly. Only a situation of the utmost gravity could have allowed our meeting a pre-beseating. I have heard the tape. And? I think your machine was abominably rude to me. Oh, I apologize. Any further comment? What other comment would you like? Oh, uh, a diagnosis on the machine's efficiency, perhaps? Don't you trust it? Well, one likes to play safe. If one is in a position to... Uh, let us stop trying to score debating points. Uh, how deeply committed are you to this plan of Arbu's? I have only one commitment to anything, to money. But that commitment is total. Oh, well, in that case, it's merely a question of how much you want to help me sabotage this thing. It is not quite as simple as that. You see, there are other people and other things involved. Ah, of course. King Ferdinand and his mother. And his country. Uh, are you in a position to bargain on their behalf? I am. Well, then, shall we start bargaining? It's time we revised a few old ideas. Honesty is not the best policy. It's just being retorted. Charity is a name for debutantes. Faith is synonym for failure. Hope, hope, somewhere, someone's waiting to betray you. Uh, Ah, the colored girl's address. You drive a hard bargain. It is something a woman has to learn nowadays. <laughs> I'll leave it to you to break the news to your royal friends. They will be delighted. We don't have to worry about Abu, you know. Uh, he's a realist, if nothing else. And the girl? Oh, now that you've given her address to us, you don't have to worry about her anymore. I will say goodbye, then. <laughs> Allow me. <laughs> I'm quite sure that it is only au revoir. Arrange an audience for me with King Ferdinand. Duty assassin, I have a job for you. Someone's always got to win. Therefore, someone's always got to lose. <laughs> Uh, who's losing? Uh, who's losing? Who's losing? Uh, who's winning? Uh, what? 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 Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> there are no patterns. Only madmen and gamblers believe in patterns. I am not mad. Nor do I gamble anymore. All I do is manipulate the moment. <laughs> King Ferdinand was only a fat fool suffering from the Laura syndrome. His mother, a charming shoplifter, trying to save her son from folly. Theobald Abu, a bitter racialist, was merely trying to contact a friend's sister. He had no interest in morphania. <laughs> Indeed, it is doubtful if he even knew where it was. But he hated mixed marriages. Scrotty was the man in the middle. And when you stand in the middle, you get knocked down by both sides. Out of these separate people, a pattern was made of hatred and prejudice and fear and suspicion. It was fed into a machine, and the machine gave back what it was supposed to give. <laughs> there are no mad like the sane mad. 
I met Wesley Childers at university. He shared and still shares my views. The white man is yesterday. We are today, we are tomorrow. Wesley Childers is our man in the West Indies. He had a little sister he was very fond of. I used to give him little presents for her. She came to this country about three years ago. Last time I saw him, he asked me if I would look her up and say hello for him. She could not have married a white man. Not even a king! Such marriages are wrong! I've nothing against the girl. How could I have? For people like me, there are no individuals. Duty assassin. Sir? I have a job for you. Shotgun wedding. I have just been explaining to a Minister of State how very generous our government can be. I see. What's my job? A young girl. A young girl, huh? Is she pretty? A strange question for a duty assassin. <laughs> you should know better. For people like me, there are no individuals. I can see now, in thinking of this marriage, I was the victim of my own liberalism. I suppose subconsciously, I was really running away from my own responsibilities. Power is a privilege, but it's not an easy one. That charming man from Whitehall made me see all that. Now they're going to make me a real monarch, though. Money will pour into my country. Modern technology will make my desert blossom like a rose. <laughs> they're even going to give me my own bomb. <laughs> and they've already given me a list of new words and phrases. Counterforces insurance, finite deterrent, doomsday machine, controlled reprisal, post-attack blackmail, bonus damage, credible first strike capability, automatic overkill. They've even promised me an American heiress to be my queen. Good dynastic reasons for accepting, of course. I'll think about it. Actually, I didn't much like women anyway. I could weep tears of unbridled joy. They're going to build my son a beautiful capital city. It will have wide tree-lined streets, tall lifting buildings, museums, Theatres, picture galleries, cinemas, shops. I shall be able to do my shoplifting in my own country. I always have been a patriot at heart. Uh, uh, who's losing? Uh, who, who's winning? Uh, uh, what? Uh, uh, uh. You can let Scrotty come out of sedation. This particular little game is almost over. It's best he was unaware of the more sordid side of politics. Don't you think? Virgo, August 23rd to September 22nd. You're now beginning a very eventful, favorable period. Key matters brought to a head with promising results. 17th and 18th are good days for buying and selling. Be prepared to make changes to suit partners for the weekend. Lucky birthday, September 13. Lucky color, puce. I wonder what my horoscope will be for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>